Moves in my heart, I'm gonna sing till the spirit moves in my heart, I'm gonna sing till Jesus calls. All praises be to the Most High God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to you in the mighty name of Jesus. I count it a blessing to stand before you today and a light thing to do so. In this lesson, I'm going to deal with the topic of false prophets. Jesus, he told his disciples when they asked what would be the sign of his coming in at the end of the world, he told them that they should not be deceived, for many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And brothers and sisters, we are living in the last days, and we see that there are many false prophets among us. We know this because of the condition of the world, and we know this because what is being taught by many of these men and women cannot be substantiated with Scripture. So that's my title today, and I want to start off in 2 Corinthians. Because in many of our churches, you rarely talk about this. This is rarely the subject matter that is taught, because if you really teach it, you might begin to question the minister that stands before you. This is Paul. And his epistle to the Corinthians. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. It says, Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So he's talking in the spiritual sense. He says, I am, God, I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, because I am concerned. That you may go astray, but I want to present you without sin to Christ. Okay? So he says, But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. That was his concern. That just as Eve was beguiled or tricked by Satan with the fruit of lies, because it wasn't an apple, it was words. There were words that he spoke that she believed that were lies. And she shared with Adam. So it says, I'm worried that your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Okay? So he's worried. And he tells him something about some that will come that he's worried about. He says, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, you might well bear with him. So I'm concerned that you're going to go after one preaching another Jesus. Now how does one come preaching another Jesus? They preach you a Jesus that is not the Jesus of this book. They preach to you a Jesus that will accept you despite of yourself. You don't have to change. He loves you anyway. He doesn't require obedience. That's another Jesus. The Jesus that loves everybody. That's another Jesus. The Jesus that was born on December 25th, that's another Jesus. The Jesus that died on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday, that's another Jesus. The Jesus that died and nullified the laws and statutes and commandments of old. So now we are under the law of love. You don't have to follow the law because of his death. That is another Jesus. And that's the Jesus that we get in many of these churches today. That is not the Jesus of this book. You need to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Jesus himself said, if you love me, keep my commandments. There's nowhere in Scripture where you can read December 25th was his birthday. That's, a, that's based on paganism. Okay? Pagans have been keeping that day long before the birth of Jesus. That's why you have Christmas trees and so forth in people's houses, mistletoe, etc., Easter, another pagan day. The only sign given by Christ that he was the Messiah, by Jesus, he stated that he would be in the grave for three days and three nights. If you say that Jesus died Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday, you are saying that he is not the Messiah. That's another Jesus. So he said, or another spirit. Now how do you get another spirit? The scripture says, try the spirit. If you go to church and you see someone speaking in tongues and you cannot understand a word that they're saying, it sounds like Babel. It's not a recognized language and there is no interpreter there. That's another spirit. If you see people falling out, falling out to the ground after they have been touched and shaking and vomit 
and foam is coming out of their mouth, that's another spirit. That's not the spirit of God. You cannot read in scripture about that taking place. Anytime you read it's about someone speaking in another tongue, it was in another language that they spoke. It was a language that can be that is recognized, not Babel. That's that's not that's another spirit. So they have a different spirit. That's why the scripture says, try the spirits. You cannot read about anybody that that got the Holy Ghost and started to do a dance in scripture. That's another spirit. Okay? He says, or another gospel. If they teach you the gospel of going into heaven, that's another gospel. If they teach you the gospel of prosperity, that is another gospel. The Lord told you, whether I go, ye cannot come. He said this. He said it more than once. That was not the problem. As a matter of fact, he's coming to this earth to establish his kingdom. He says, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I shall come again. He told you to pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom's coming down. You can read about it in Revelation, where it says, John the Revelator saw New Jerusalem coming down as a bride prepared for her husband. So that's what's going to happen. That's another Jesus, that's another spirit, and that's another gospel. But who would come preaching another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel? Verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. See, there are a lot of false apostles out here. You have false prophets and false teachers in our midst who are deceitful workers and they transform themselves. In other words, they look righteous, but they are wicked because they are not telling you what thus saith the Lord. It says, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He says, don't marvel over this. Satan has done the same thing. He says he has transformed himself into an angel of light. The scripture says in Revelation, it says, the 12th chapter, that he has deceived the whole world. He has not deceived the whole world, brothers and sisters, by saying, I'm Satan, I'm going to hell, follow me so we all can be in hell together. No, what he's done is he has inspired his ministers. See, many of us are unaware of the fact that Satan has ministers. As a matter of fact, he has more ministers than there are ministers of God. Look at the condition of the world. Look at the condition of the world. There are many false prophets. Many false prophets. 15, it says, Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. See, they come looking righteous. They come looking righteous. As the ministers of righteousness who end shall be according to their works. So they're going to meet their demise, but so will you if you follow them. Let's go to Matthew 5, uh, the 7th chapter. To find out how we recognize a false prophet. This is Matthew, the 7th chapter, the 15th verse, and it reads. Because this warning is all over scripture. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. And what does he mean by this? He's saying, hey, you need to beware because there are some that look like ministers of righteousness, but they are ministers of Satan. They look, they look righteous. They look pious and religious, but they will devour you. In other words, they are wolves, spiritually speaking. They will destroy you, just like wolves destroy their prey. They will destroy you spiritually, meaning they will lead you to eternal damnation. He says, ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? Okay? So you shall know them by their fruits. What does he mean? He means the words that they speak. You read about in Genesis, where Adam and Eve ate fruit. What they ate was not an apple. It was the fruit of lies. They ate a lie. 
and went according to a lie. This is what these false prophets, this is what Satan's ministers bring you. They bring you the fruit of lies. They may use the name of Jesus, but they are not going to bring you the unadulterated word of God. Verse 20, he says, Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. So you know a false prophet by the words that he speaks. And what is he going to speak? He's going to speak something that's in contradiction to the word of God. God will not send you anybody that's going to tell you anything different from the scripture. That's not going to happen. If that happens, that person is not sent by God. And in order to know, in order for you to notice that, you have to know the scripture for yourself. All right. Let's go to uh, Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah, the 56th chapter. And find out why would one preach falsehood knowingly? Why would they do this? Okay. This is 56, Matthew, Isaiah 56 and the 10th chapter. It says, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot box, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. He says his watchmen are blind. Back in the days of old, on top of the city walls, they'd have watchmen. And these watchmen would look out over the lands that, that are near the city and warn the people of trouble, warn them of invading armies, warn them of trouble on the horizon. Spiritually speaking, the bishop, the minister, the teacher, the prophet is supposed to do the same thing. Warn the people of trouble. Warn them when they are in error spiritually. Warn them when they have erred in the laws and stat concerning the laws, statutes, and commandments of God. That's their job. God told Ezekiel, I have set you up to be a watchman. Warn the people of me. So you need to tell the people when they are in error. He says, but his watchmen, he says, they are blind. So if, you, if they are blind, they cannot see. They are spiritually blind. That's why the disciples came to Jesus and they said, look, this is in, uh, around Matthew the 15th chapter. They said, don't you know that these Pharisees and Sadducees were offended? He said, oh, well, look, they are blind leaders of the blind. I Meaning they have no understanding. So that's how these watchmen are. He says these watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They lack understanding. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. It's just like if you buy a dog. You live in a bad neighborhood and you buy a dog to protect your house. To roam around the premises and to alert you in cases of danger. Only you bought this dog and you didn't know the dog could not bark. You didn't know the dog slept 23 hours a day. So when the burglar came, either the dog was sleeping or he could not bark. That dog is no good. The same thing with these false prophets, brothers and sisters. They are not telling you what thus saith the Lord. They are not even telling you not only that you need to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of God. They are misinforming you or not informing you at all concerning the prophecies that are to come. That you truly need to know about living in these last days. So it says. Yea. They are greedy dogs. Which can never have enough. Alright. So that's why someone would stand in that. Position of bishop. Or minister. Teacher. Or prophet. Whatever you want to call yourself. Spiritual leader. And lead people astray. And not being sent by God. They will stand there. Because it's big business. You can get paid big money being a false prophet. It's hard to get paid like that being a man of God because the message you have isn't smooth. You're telling people, if you don't get your house together, if you don't get yourself in order, you are going to burn in the lake of fire. That's not a smooth message. But you can get paid if you lie to people. You can get paid if you make them feel good. All you have to do is get a place, have some good singing, have some good praise. Tell the people that they're all right in spite of their sin. You can get paid. If you have a good mouthpiece, you're a good orator, 